Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, my name is Josh and in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Capital One 2X Miles business credit card. So I'll be going over the main features of this card, its pros as well as its drawbacks. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a much better idea of whether or not this credit card is a good fit for you. But before we go ahead and dive into the main features of this card, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Plus, if you would like to receive up to $200 in free stock in a pinned comment below, I will be leaving a link to Robinhood. All you have to do is once you click on that link, is just sign up for a free account and then simply link your bank account. You do not even have to make an opening deposit. At that point in time, Robinhood will be sending you one free stock worth all the way up to $200. Okay, so diving right into the main features of the Capital One 2X Miles credit card, First off, we're gonna be discussing miles and how you can earn them with this card. So starting out, you will be earning five miles per dollar spent on hotels and rental cars, as long as you book them through the Capital One travel portal. And then on all other transactions, unlimited across the board and on all categories, you will be earning two miles per dollar spent. Now with this card, there's also going to be a welcome or spend bonus with it as well. So starting out, you will be receiving 50,000 bonus miles as long as you're able to spend at least $4,500 within the first three months of having this card. So those 50,000 miles are going to be worth $500. Then on top of that, you can also receive some other benefits with this card as well. So just for instance, you will be receiving up to $100 in credit for either global entry or TSA pre-check every four years with this card. You're also gonna be receiving $0 fraud liability, which means basically if you use, if you lose the card or someone steals the card, misplace it, whatever, and someone goes off and spends hundreds or even thousands of dollars with it, whether at a physical retail store or online, you will not be held liable to pay for those transactions because you did not authorize them. Then in addition to that, you're also gonna get access to year in summary, so you'll see what you're spending the most amount of money on. You can also set up account managers. So if you yourself personally do not have the time to be constantly calling into Capital One anytime a problem arises, you can assign an account manager. That way they can be the ones who call in, potentially you know, have to be put on hold and use up their time to get important details because there are certain details that uh, only like account managers or you yourself personally can get from the Capital One representative. If an authorized user calls in, they won't get like access to all of the transactions that take place or be able to make many changes, whereas an account manager could actually make most of those changes. Then on top of that, you're also gonna be able to receive purchase records, which then you can download into multiple formats, including Quicken, QuickBooks, and Excel. You can also receive virtual card numbers as well. So if you want to make a transaction online, you can get like your own virtual card number, which will be different than your physical card number. It'll work for just one time only. You use it on that website, and then perhaps maybe if that website gets exposed later down the line and a hacker gets into it, and they steal the credit card numbers, since the credit card you used on that website would have been a one-time working only virtual card number, that card will no longer work in the future, so they won't be able to commit fraud with your card. That's gonna be one of the benefits of having a virtual card number that you can use each time that you go online to make a transaction if you would like. Then on top of that, you can also get your employee cards for free. So if you have like five employees, for example, you can get five extra cards for free for each of them, and then you can set spend limits for each card. So maybe for one employee, you want to give them a spend limit of $2,000 per month, but maybe another employee, you only want to give them $100 or $200. You can set those spend limits for each of them, and each card is free. And that's a pretty good benefit because believe it or not, with some of the other business credit cards out there, they actually charge you like $175 or something like that per card. So the fact that you can get these employee cards for free and set their spend limits, that is a pretty good benefit with that. And then you can also have the access to card locks. So maybe you lose your credit card or you lose one of your employee cards or your employee loses them. You can go in and lock the card until you or they are able to find them. Then you can just go right back in and unlock it. And at that point in time, you can begin using, trans, uh, begin using the card again. Whereas when it's locked, the card won't work. So if someone did steal it, 
You go in there and lock it, the card won't work, so if they try to use it, when it's locked, it's not going to go through. And then finally, you're also gonna be receiving extended warranty protection as well, so that's a pretty good benefit as well. So now that we went over the main features of this card at this point in time, we are gonna go ahead and dive into the APR and fees. And of course, that's also super important as well. So starting out your purchase APR is gonna be 26.24%, so that's definitely a little bit on the high end there. Then as far as balance transfers go, starting out, you are not gonna receive any type of promotional APR at 0% like you see with some of the other credit cards out there on the market. Instead, it's gonna be also at 26.24%, just like your purchases are. So obviously it's probably not going to make a whole lot of sense to perform a balance transfer with this card, given that more than likely it's not going to be much lower than your other credit card if you currently have a higher interest with that that you're paying a lot of interest on a month to month basis. Then as far as cash advances go on this channel, we usually recommend to stay far away from cash advances. This of course should not be considered financial advice, just my own personal reasons. Usually with them, you have a very high interest rate, plus you have to pay a lot of fees as well. But if you do decide to take out a cash advance with this card, just know that your interest rate on them is going to be a whopping 32.24% plus a lot of fees as well, which we are gonna go ahead and dive into right now. So as far as the fees go, starting out with your cash advances, you're gonna have a fee of either $5 or 5% of the amount of each cash advance, whichever happens to be greater. Then as far as balance transfers go, even though it's not going to make a whole lot of sense to do a balance transfer with this card, given the high interest rate of 26.24%, if you decide to do one right now, there are no fees associated with the balance transfer. Maybe later down the line, they will offer you like a 0% promotional offer, but at that point in time, they probably will have a fee of like $5 or 5%, whichever happens to be greater. You'll definitely have to read the terms if you do receive something like that and you want to carry out the balance transfer. Then as far as other fees go, if you happen to pay late, there is gonna be a late payment fee of up to $39. Although if you do pay late, I would definitely recommend calling into Capital One to see if they can waive that fee for a one-time convenience. Usually for the first time, they will be able to waive the fee if you happen to pay late once or maybe even twice, they can waive that fee. Although certainly, Nothing is guaranteed. Then as far as foreign transaction fees go with this card, there are no foreign transaction fees. So if you do happen to travel abroad, this is definitely a card that you can take with you and continue using. And Capital One will not charge you anything extra for doing so. And then as far as the annual fee goes, for the first year loan, starting out, you will not have an annual fee. However, starting on year two, moving forward, each and every year after the first year, you will have an annual fee of $95. This is also another fee that you might be able to have waived for at least the first year, possibly even the second year, you could always try calling into Capital One to see if they can waive that fee as soon as it hits your account. But no guarantees once again, but it's definitely worth calling in. So now that we went over the main features of this card as well as the APR and fees, at this point in time, I'm gonna go over what I would consider to be the best things about this credit card and the worst things about this credit card. So we're gonna start out with the good things. So the first thing is that you can earn 50,000 bonus miles as long as you're able to spend at least $4,500 within the first three months of having this credit card. For some people that might be a little bit more difficult. For some people it may not be all that hard. Then on top of that, you're also gonna be earning two miles per dollar spent on all transactions across the board. 2% isn't excellent, but two miles per dollar spent is pretty good all in all. It's certainly above average. Then on top of that, you're also gonna be receiving a $100 credit towards global entry or TSA pre-check that is going to be every four years with this card. And then finally with this card, there are not going to be any foreign transaction fees. So if you happen to travel abroad, this is definitely a card that you can take with you and continue using and you will not be hit with any extra fees, at least from Capital One. So those are the good things about this card. As far as the drawbacks go, starting out is the fact that you do have that $95 annual fee every single year starting after the first year, so that's a drawback there. And then also, you're not gonna be receiving any other type of credits with this card other than the $100 credit that will be going towards global entry or TSA pre-check, and that's only going to be every four years. It would be nice to have another credit on top of that one that you could be receiving every year to sort of offset that $95 annual fee. So just to sum things up here, all in all, the first year alone, the fact that you can earn the 50,000 mile spin bonus, which is gonna be worth $500, it's going to be worth it and you're not gonna have an annual fee the first year, plus the two miles per dollar spent, plus the credit towards global entry or TSA pre-check. 
However, starting the second year moving forward, if you're not able to waive that annual fee, this may be a card that's not all that worth it because you're not gonna have the credits to offset the $95 annual fee. So with that said, starting in the second year moving forward, if you're not able to offset the annual fee or have that waived, it's probably not going to be all that worth it starting in year two, but ultimately that's going to be your decision. But that's all we have for today's video. I certainly hope that you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give this video a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already, and I will see you in the next video.